ladies and gentlemen. I drank all my coffee, I believe, so I'll just have water for the rest of the day. All right, so a couple weeks ago, I went on to uh, Vistaprint, which is where I get my business cards made. And business cards are very, very handy when you're out and about and you meet up with somebody and, and uh, um, for example, when I was at Sydney, Port Sydney, and just up in um, Muskoka, I videotaped the guy cooking and he waved and, and so later on I gave him a card. I said, oh, you'll be on my vlog tomorrow if you don't mind. And he said, sure, that's so great. And so I gave him a card. So instead of like writing it down on a napkin and all that stuff, so, it's just a little bit more professional when you meet other YouTubers or possible sponsors or whatever and you give them a card, they can contact you and you don't have to write it down. So the last ones I had, I designed I guess a year and a half, two years ago, and uh, it was this card. And again, the only, the only information I don't have on it is my address and my phone number because sometimes I give them, give them out to fans and stuff just because um, it's kind of fun to hand out some stuff to people. And, uh, but I, I, again, I usually mainly hand it out to uh, either other YouTubers or people who I put in videos and I want them to watch it. Um, there you go. So kind of got bored of those and they didn't really, I don't know. I'll let you choose at the end. <laughs> so I designed a new one. Since we went to Hawaii, and I used some of the photographs from Hawaii, uh, I think the problem with these ones, why did I put it away? I don't know. Well, this is something my buddy Steve, who I'm going out to lunch, talked me into buying, because it's a nice little card holder, so you just don't have cards with an elastic band in your pocket. So, and that's it's not bad, I sat on it uh, at YouTube Space last week, so it doesn't really close very well. I just, unbend it but uh, yeah I just wanted to change it up hope you guys like the change do, do, do. oh boy here we go and I also added uh, like a gloss to it it said spot a spot gloss but I don't know where they added the spot gloss there's no gloss on this anyway so one of the things I didn't like about this card is the fact that some of the information on there is just a bit too small and it's black on gray and I wanted to change that up. So I did, um, so I found a picture when we were up on Diamond Head. Uh, that was my favorite picture I took while in Hawaii. And so I put all my information on there and on the back is Rabbit Island. Cause it looks like a rabbit swimming in the water and just a nice little quote on the back. This it's just a little nicer and prettier to, to look at. Um, I'm, I'm thinking the next stage might be to have my image on it just because I'm not sure if you've ever come across that where somebody gives you a business card and you take it, you put it in your wallet and sorry, I'm just wiping off cat hairs. I should have wiped off beforehand. Uh, you put it in your wallet and then months later, you go into your wallet, you pull up the, the card and you're like, who is that again, right? <laughs> but when they have a picture on it, you're like, oh yeah, that person, I met them wherever. And so, so you guys can choose <laughs> which one is better. I'm pretty sure the, the photograph one is just a little bit nicer. It's got all the greens and blues and whites. And that's what, those are my th f three favorite colors because it reminds me of summer. But again, the back is definitely a huge, a huge improvement, big time. So this was like, because I wanted to do more of the traveling stuff. So I put like world landmarks all over that. Uh, but now this is just gonna be way easier. And the, the lettering, uh, I guess the social media links are just so much easier to read and so you just got your name on there, travel vlogger, food reviewer, my email so they can contact me. Technically people contact you through any social media nowadays. Um, like Instagram, I get contacted by people on Instagram all the time. I just don't check it enough. It's not like I get notifications 
from that. That's why I prefer people to email me because then at least I get a notification. I check my email in the morning and then I move on with my day. It, it's every once in, maybe every other day I look at my Instagram and then you'll see that little one or two people have said something in your Instagram. But uh, yeah, this is this is so much. I'm definitely happier with this. Definitely nice. All right, we're on our way down to Bradford. Actually, we're in Bradford right now, passing the GO train, headed to Wendy's to do a Monday mukbang. And uh, it's funny, before I uh, do some of these videos, just a little insight for you guys. Just before I do these videos, I sometimes have to go through my list of videos to see if I've done something like that before. And uh, just so I don't duplicate something, which I've done once. I actually reviewed something I had done years before and just completely forgot. Some people don't mind that because it's like a, an updated review. They may have changed it a little bit or whatever. So that has happened and, and some people have asked me to redo things because some of those videos are so old and they want to see the new style of video, which is kind of funny. <clears throat> but today it's all about, uh, uh, I guess, the, the four favorite Wendy's items. I'm gonna eat all four of them during the mukbang and and then also talk about like the storyline is going to be uh, why I eat in my car because that's probably not, number, not one of the number one comments I get but it's a comment that comes up all the time. Why are you eating in your car? Why are you eating in your car? Why are you eating in your car? So you have to watch the mukbang so I can uh, fill you in on that whole, a lot of you guys already know, because I think I've talked about it a billion times on vlogs and, and stuff like that. Uh, I watched a, a video of Ben Dean. If you don't know who Ben Dean is, he's uh, an American, Korean American, and he was adopted as a Korean by an American family, and then as soon as he turned... I'm not sure exactly what age he was. Uh, he moved back to Korea and uh, is now a YouTuber. And he used to watch my videos when he was young, which is really, really cool. I jumped in on one of his uh, live shows one time. And uh, it was a lot of fun because uh, as soon as I popped up, he was like, no way. Oh, my God. Ken Domic is here watching my vlog, uh, my, my live show. And, and, he, and he proceeded to tell me how much uh, he used to watch all my videos. And so it was really nice. So it was, it was really cool. And and uh, cause I didn't know he watched my videos. I just knew of him and the fact that anytime I do Korean style uh, foods and stuff, they usually get a lot of views and it gets a lot of attention. And, and since my recent tr trip to uh, Japan and how successful that trip was, uh, I would like to try and maybe replicate it, but I really need to know somebody who lives in that country. And knowing another YouTuber, unfortunately, he's really young. And when I meet up with people like, you know, Paul and Eric in Japan, it, it kind of fit. Uh, when you go to, if I, if I went to Korea to meet up with Ben, um, it might be awkward for some people because here's this 52-year-old guy hanging around this, I don't know, 21, 23-year-old guy. And, and although we're like kind of colleagues, we both work for YouTube or work with YouTube and we both make content on YouTube. We're, we're kind of colleagues and to me age doesn't matter when it comes to colleagues and, and things like that. If he was like a high school student, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. But the fact that he's an adult and, and uh, living in Korea, knows Korean, could help me get around Korea, it'd be really cool. So Ben Dean, if you see this video, uh, let's work something out, that'd be so cool. Um, so I watched one of his videos that said something crazy happened to me or the craziest thing that ever happened to me. And uh, right after our live show that he did, um, let me back up a step. A couple of things he did that was probably not a good idea was he videotaped the exterior of his, his apartment and went up and showed the, the pad that gets you into the, I guess like a, a like a, what is it called? An access pa panel. And uh, he blurred it out, but you can kind of see where he, he moved his hand. And so somebody went to his house, 
knowing his live stream was ending and knowing that he was home, waited outside his apartment door. He actually got into the apartment somehow, up to his apartment, waited for him, and when he opened the door, he the guy forced himself in. He had a knife. He had a mask on, and I'm not sure if he was wearing a hat, but it doesn't matter. But uh, basically wanted to steal all of his identity and go to the States and get loans or something. And uh, it was pretty traumatic for him, and I didn't know that story uh, until I watched it this morning, and uh, it is, it's really scary. Uh, anybody who wants to be part of YouTube or whatever, you, you, and I've, I've made the mistake, again, going back many years, not even thinking that I would be uh, as successful as I am. I'm not saying that I'm crazy successful at YouTube, but I am living off of YouTube, and uh, so to me, that's I'm a success on YouTube. And I've accidentally shown my address. I've accidentally shown my phone number, which I've had to change. Um, back in the day, before I knew anything, how big I, my channel was going to get, I did uh, videotape the exterior of my house, and uh, which was a bad idea. I just figured nobody would know where that is, but there are people who you know know me already, and then you know then that person knows this person, and they. You know, and that person doesn't like me or whatever, and, and whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's it is spooky, and uh, I guess my num my number one thing to anybody who's starting a YouTube channel is don't don't let anybody know where your house is. <laughs> it's just the dumbest idea. And I felt really bad for Ben. He says it's taken him like three months uh, to um, kind of get to about like ninety nine percent feeling safe he says Korea is a safe place uh, this person just targeted him because they knew where he lived and, and kind of how he got and he shared a lot of personal information in his live shows and people just this one particular person jotted down as much information as possible and used that against him and uh, threatened his girlfriend and his family because he knew where they lived supposedly and and but he was just there to get as much information off him as possible steal his identity go to the United States and then like try to get loans and stuff and rip off banks with under the assumption that he was Ben Dean anyway so he's had to move he's on his third house and he's never he's not going to do a studio or a, a walk through his his home um, I've I walk I walk around my home but I don't purposely show my bedroom, uh, my kids' bedrooms. I, I think I've shown Ben's bedroom a couple times. So there's nothing really to see in there except Ben's stuff. So, yeah. I haven't really done, a, like, a walkthrough. My house is kind of small, just like Ben Dean's apartments in, in Korea. Like I was saying, i got to get all this stuff uh, shot, get home, edit it, uh, and get it out as quickly as possible for Monday mukbang. Uh, I do have one video in the can for Wednesday, which was me eating the ramen noodles downtown Toronto. So that'll be out Wednesday. Tomorrow at lunch, I'm going out to um, lunch with my buddy Steve, who I haven't seen in a while. And uh, yeah, he was impressed on how tall Ben has gotten. And uh, he saw that picture on Instagram of when, when Ben was leaving, that Ben's like a full head size taller than I am, which is crazy. Anyway. So, thanks for coming by. I uh, hope you like my new um, uh, business cards. I hope you like the little story about Ben Dean. Go check them out. Please go say hi. Say, uh, yeah, you and Ken have got to uh, get together, uh, whether in Korea or in Toronto, if they ever came to play. But, uh, yeah, that would be a fascinating, amazing cultural experience to go to Korea. All right, guys, have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.